guys and welcome to my channel. So today I just wanted to have like a chill out little watercolour tutorial. I'm going to show you guys how to create this starry night scene in watercolour. And I'm kind of excited today because it's also going to be a bit of a product test. Arteza have kindly gifted these pens to me. So these are watercolour pens. I've been desperate to try them for ages because for years now I have been working with this really old watercolour pen which is basically um, where you put the water inside the bottle of the pen and this one is so naff, I think it was 25p which is nothing. So I've been really excited to try these for a while and yeah today I'm going to do a little product test with them and we're going to create a watercolour scene so let's get to it. So for my painting surface I'll be using watercolour paper and I'll be using this as my watercolour palette. All the paints and paintbrushes have been provided by Arteza. Thank you so much Arteza for gifting those to me. So to fill up the water brushes, all you have to do is just unscrew the top, just fill it with water. You only need a tiny amount and it fills it up and then just screw it back on and you are good to go. You just have to pump on the push button a few times and the water will start to come out. Okay, so I'm gonna only be using four colors. I've got Prussian blue, violet, ice blue, and then black or noir. So at the end, I will actually be using a white gouache to add little stars, or maybe I'll use a Tipex pen, I don't know. I'm gonna see what I'm gonna do, but you can use also on top whatever you want. You can use white acrylic paint, white gouache, Tipex, anything that will be opaque on top of watercolor. So I'm just gonna squeeze some of these out onto my palette now, and we can get started. I'm also going to use just a little bit of washi tape just to um, make sure that my paper doesn't move around. So I'm just going to pop a little bit in each corner. And this will also help it not buckle as well. There we go. So with pens, I'm going to start off with the biggest one which is quite a big wide flat brush. So I've already filled them all up with water and I guess we just start. So what I'm gonna do is squeeze a little bit out onto the palette of water. So I'm just gonna press the little push buttons you can see on the paintbrush. Just get out some water. I don't know if I'm going to need some extra water as well, but I'm going to try and do it only using these because I feel like if you have a pot of water as well, then there's kind of not much point. So I'm going to try and just use the water from these. So I'm just going to take some of the blue paint here, which is Prussian blue. I'm going to start by using quite a lot of water and just spreading around the paint. And I really want this to be more of an intuitive painting so I'm not going to be too caught up on like making sure it's exactly right. I want it to be quite uh, like free for all. So I'm going to add quite a lot of water. Okay, I'm also going to take some of the ice blue and start to mix that in here because obviously it's going to be like galaxies and stars and you can see that the colours are starting to mix really nicely there. Yeah, here's a little close up. And that is why I really love watercolour paint. It's got some really beautiful qualities to it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back in with the Prussian blue and just start to create like little shapes in that paint basically, so it's all gonna to swirl together. And again, you can keep pushing this little pen to add more water. The only thing I might need, in fact, is a little bit of kitchen roll just to take off any excess paint. I 
Okay, I really like how it's going so far, so I'm just going to carry on, just keep swirling paint around, and like I said a second ago, I'm not going to like think about it too much, so if you guys are painting along, kind of follow your own instinct with it. I want to show you guys the process that I'm using to create it, but it'd be really cool if actually everyone's was slightly different. I'm just using a mixture of ice blue and Prussian blue. And so far I really like this. The only thing that could be an issue is getting a thumb ache from pressing the button. But I think because of this stage we're using so much water, um, when you're doing the little details and things you wouldn't need as much water. I really like a lot of water because it creates really nice effects. Uh, but I mean for the first layer you could have a little pot of water and use that as well in conjunction with it. Okay, I am in fact out of water with this brush, so I'm just going to go and fill it up again. I'm planning on using these when I'm travelling, so having them as part of my travel kit so I can fill them up with water before I leave and then use them straight away. Um, but I mean, even if you run out of water, what I have done before is take like a bottle of water like that you drink sort of thing and you can just top it up with that because it's such a minute amount of water that you fill it up with it's not very much water at all that you have to top it up with so it's quite easy to take like a water bottle and use that Okay, I'm not going to worry too much about down here because I'm going to add some like trees and things. Okay, what I'm also going to do is take some of the lilac now, or violet, sorry, it's violet. And I'm going to start just to add in like little hints of this purple colour. I don't want too much, but I just want to add just a little bit. I probably squeezed too much out actually onto my palette thinking about it. But just so that it's not all one colour, I thought it might add something quite nice. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is wait for this layer to now completely dry, because I've added quite a lot of water and I can see the papers struggling a little bit even though it's really thick paper. So I'm gonna leave that to dry and then we can go over with some more layers. But while that's drying, I'm gonna just show you some close-ups of the paint because it looks so cool up close. So to rinse out the brush, um, you could also, again, use a glass of water, but I'm just gonna squeeze water out and then just keep dabbing it on the paper towel until it comes out. So you can see that the water is running clear but the paintbrush still looks like it's got paint on it and I think what's happened there is that because the bristles were white they've actually just stained so it's not a big deal as long as you don't mind it's just something to bear in mind It's like waiting for paint to dry Oh, hang on it is Okay, so although it's not completely dry it's like there's most areas are like touch dry and there's still pockets of wet places but that's okay because what I'm thinking about doing is adding in a bit of black with Prussian blue and really darkening the corners up and adding some darker patches and actually what I'm thinking of is that that might really work well with while the paint is quite damp because it will absorb the paint quite nicely and mix it together so 
what I'm thinking. I might try a different brush. I might try this one, which is a round brush. So that's one thing that is kind of annoying is that the lid doesn't go on the top, which means that we may lose lids here. And um, what I'm gonna do then is squeeze some out of the paintbrush, take some black and add some Prussian blue. Ooh, that's very dark. And what I'm gonna do is like, especially around the edges, and sort of blend it out. So I'm gonna squeeze on down on the paintbrush and sort of blend that in. So what I've just done there is pop some paint and then like squoze, ooh, ooh, I can flick it too. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm just experimenting here. <laughs> yeah, just pop down some paint and then like squoze quite, squoze, is that the right word? Squeeze quite a lot of water out on top of it and it sort of made it like blend really nicely. Oh, there's a hair on my painting. Okay, so I'm gonna go for this side. I can feel the paper really starting to give up on me a little bit, so I need to be careful with how much water I'm adding here. Okay, I feel like it's almost there. I think I'm gonna take some black and then like dot bits that are already uh, very wet so that the paint spreads nicely. Tidying the edges up a little bit. <laughs> I 
Okay, and definitely feeling like my paint's gonna give up soon and just rip apart <laughs> because of all the water. So I'm gonna leave this to dry again. And I'm gonna keep my eye on it as well because any bits that are drying that I'm not happy with, I could just sort of blend out. So I'm just gonna, yeah, just keep my eye on it. But yeah, okay, so I'm gonna wait for that to dry. I love with watercolor how you get all these like little channels and it almost looks like a picture of a planet taken from space or something, like with loads of little rivers everywhere. It's really cool. Okay, so next I'm gonna add the trees and this is gonna be too big, so I'm gonna just make sure that's clean by squeezing it out till the water runs clear. I'm gonna pick a much thinner brush. I'm really, really impressed with these paintbrushes so far, so I'm gonna give these ones a go. I'm not really sure what the difference is, apart from that these are a lot smaller. Um, ooh, the water comes out a lot easier with these. If you push on that, the water really comes out fast, which sounds like a bad thing, but that's really nice. Um, it, it feels like a little bit like you have more control. And it does feel comfier in the hand as well, so I'm going to give this one a go. So I'm going to take the black, and we're going to do the trees in jet black. And to do that I'm just going to sort of go side to side. And I'm not gonna do it too intricately, I'm just gonna do it quite fast. Otherwise I'll be here all day. Then I'm just going to basically do the same with all different sized trees, smaller, larger, and just make up the skyline.
Okay, and now I'm just going to pop a bit more black on the bottom just to join up all the trees. So I think that's done for the trees, um, so next what we need to do is add in the stars. So I'm going to use some white gouache for the stars but as I said earlier you can use acrylic paint or you can use Tipex or you can use like these white gel pens. So it's completely up to you and to do the stars we want a tiny brush so I'm going to get the smallest one I can find which is this one. And we don't really want much water here because we want the paint to be quite uh, opaque. So we don't want it to be like translucent -y. And basically I'm just going to start adding dots everywhere. So here we go. Okay, I'm going to use a method now which I think I might end up regretting, <clears throat> but <laughs> I've got a very stiff bristle brush here and I'm going to pop on some white paint and then I'm going to take my thumb and sort of like spray it for more star effects. And it does kind of seem to be working. I'm going to carry on just adding little tiny dots now so we've got a really nice mixture of different sized dots or stars should I say Okay, so I think I've finally finished. So I'm going to wait for that to completely dry now and then I'm going to show you guys some close-ups. So thank you so so much guys for watching this video, I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did please hit that like button and subscribe. I'm hoping to do a lot more tutorials in the next coming months so keep your eyes peeled for them and have a great fantastic day. Thanks guys, bye!